if you've been watching our videos for any length of time, which you should be, you will have heard us say over and over and over, there's not just one way to RV. There are a hundred ways to RV and you can mix it up and change it up. So today the question is, how do you like to RV? favorite style of camping as far as between boondocking and full hookups definitely it's full hookups I mean if we were rich and we could afford full hookups all the time everywhere and it didn't matter yeah we'd probably do that maybe, maybe but some maybe. of my some of my favorite experiences have been in state parks so that's true that's true we like to mix it up really I mean the full hookups are fantastic and that's what we prefer but it's a give and take for us so we'll mm -hmm. gladly give up um, sewer hookups for a week or 10 days if that means that, that we are in our preferred destination. Like a beach house. So like a beach house. So and you and it also helps balance out the cost of yeah. you know the, the per day average if you're going to some state parks versus always going to the RV parks that are usually more expensive. We like to boondock as much as we possibly can but there's still limits so ultimately we will run out of fresh water or uh, we'll fill our gray tank. Or we'll need to do laundry. Or we'll need to do laundry. So for us, we're trying to adopt a kind of like five days of boondocking and two days of, of an RV park. And that then gives us time to kind of dump the tanks, fill up, charge the batteries. Uh, and then we tend to do a load of cooking and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Fill our freeze with food. So then we've got some easy meals uh, when we're boondocking. As far as uh, uh, non-boondocking spots, we like to stay in uh, national park campgrounds or national forest campgrounds as much as possible. It might be dry camping, but it's absolutely beautiful views usually there. We often find as well that the boondocking spots are closer to where we want to be than a lot of the, the private RV parks. So just it tends to happen fairly naturally that we find it's easier to find a boondocking spot than it is to find an RV park. For the places that we like to go, which is the national park units. Our preferred style really is kind of a blend. Uh, it used to be almost exclusively resorts and then about 18 months into it we started to boondock a little bit mm -hmm. and we boondocked a week every now and then or we would boondock for a couple nights and then last year we boondocked over 170 days so we had boondocked almost half of the year yeah this year the goal is to boondock even more than that we still enjoy an rv resort or a park now and then mm -hmm. for laundry use for a hot tub now and then mm -hmm. or a swimming pool mm -hmm. something like that or if it's close to an airport that we need to use or you know for business or whatever but if we had our our choices would be to be in the desert southwest boondocking for sure or or you know on a stream or a, a, sure. a lake sure. um, some place where you know we're we're not as close to people yeah. and um you know that we can have a little bit of freedom and peace you know lately i've been telling people that i kind of like the the luxury of having hookups just because um it's nice but I like both. I like to be able to boondock and have everything that I, I have everything I need here to do it. So I like a little bit of both. For me, it's boondocking. Uh, I think it's you too. Yeah, we Booty. we're just touching the edge of boondocking. We're uh, our preferred style right now is spend as much time as we can with our close friends that we've met out in the open because um, like this rally style is pretty cool too. Uh, RV resorts, I don't like them. We're too close to people. I can hear them close their doors every time. I can't even watch a movie without getting disturbed, even without the generators. Uh, mm -hmm. When we had that little bitty taste of the boondocking that we had, we fell in love with it just because, I mean, you walk outside and the sun sets, the sun rises, the skies, the mm -hmm. night skies, and... You we, can't beat it. You can't beat mm -hmm. it. And I think mm -hmm. boondocking is our preferred. If we could boondock 365 days a year, we probably would. Our, our preferred style has has already changed in the four months that we've been on the road. We, you know, we originally thought that we were going to do a bunch of boondocking. We have done very little of it. Um, then we thought we were going to spend a lot of time in campgrounds. And we've kind of figured out that we want to do a, a, a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. And, you know, have a little grounding. You know, we both work full time remote. So it's kind of nice to, to have a, a, a set schedule for a little bit and then take a break and, and go out and stay in the middle of nowhere and just enjoy the scenery. Yeah, well, a little more privacy. Yeah, we find parks are somewhat clicky. Yeah. And uh, we don't really dig that, so. 
uh, our typical styling is is a mixture of um, RV parks, commercial parks. Um, we love state parks. We love national parks. Right, and and we do do some boondocking uh, in some of the par the national parks and state parks that don't provide water or electric. Or um, we also really like uh, Corps of Engineer because usually they're big spaces and you get electric and some of them get water. And they're well run. And then even we've been to a couple that had full hookup. So we're mostly a mixture. Sean hates it when I call us this, but we are glampers. And I say that because we like RV resorts, like RV campgrounds, but maybe a step up. Like I like a hot tub. I like a heated pool. We like full hookups. Um, we also are very much city campers. So by that, we are either in a city or just outside of a large city. We actually enjoy that. We like going to museums and tourist attractions. So being in a uh, urban location kind of lends itself to that a little more for us. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we started out our preferred RVing style. Uh, we started out in the nicer resorts, and since then we've kind of expanded that to we like to do Corps of Engineers. We like to do we plan to do some boondocking. We have gone ahead and done the uh, the lithium battery upgrade with the solar on the roof. We have 900 watts of solar and 500 amps of lithium. And that just gives us a little bit more comfort when we go to rallies, which we like to do. And uh, we don't have to run the generator as much. So that's one of the things. Uh, when we go out west, we'll boondock more there. Sure. So I think we, we like to mix it up, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. So. Mine is parks right now because I'm learning, still yeah. learning. I would agree with that. Once I feel more comfortable with the coach and how it operates and the electrical system and how long we can make a uh, hundred gallons of water last, uh, after, once we figure that out, I'm, I'm into boondocking and, and uh, uh, you know, being, off the, being grid. off the grid. Yeah, but right now we are more comfortable in parks. Yes. How do we prefer to RV? Um, we've only been out here two months, but I think we know our style. And um, I think it's going to be a mixture of boondocking. We really haven't done that much yet, but that really... Yeah, it appeals to us. Yes, yeah. um, because we just want the scenery, the spots yeah. that you don't get to see all the time. So I think boondocking, we're really interested in the harvest host for the experiences yes. of staying in places that have farms and um, wineries, breweries. and But we also... We'll do some campgrounds too. And state um, parks. Yeah, yeah, state yeah. parks, national It'll parks. It's going to be a mixture for us. Yeah. Our preferred RVing sites would be state parks. We absolutely love state parks. We enjoy staying there. Um, unfortunately, they are like twenty-five dollars a night, so we have to do those limited and but in between. But right, but they're still cheaper. We have a thousand trails like camping pass, and we kind of use that as an in-between, sort of like a KOA. They're typically, uh, I mean, they're great. Um, Personally, for us, we don't like the RV parks so much or the like the resorts and stuff because we just we prefer the state parks and to be on the nature a little bit more. So agreed. Yeah, so that's pretty much our preferred style now, and it could change as we have this now. We might boondock even more, and that's what I'm yeah. hoping to do when we go west. So, as you have heard from our favorite RVers, there's not just one way to RV, nope. and most of them like to do all different kinds of RV. Yep. Just like us, we're we're getting to the we don't mind where we are, how we RV. Is that really true? Well, right now, I mean, we feel comfortable if we're boondocking, we feel comfortable with partial hookups. In the beginning, we had to be totally hooked up, totally, totally, totally. That's because we didn't even know how to open the dang door half the time anyway. We were or still learning, turn on the how, lights. Yeah, learning yeah. how to do everything in the RV. So that was our security blanket. Yeah, we had to have full hookups in order to function. But now, after boondocking in Arizona for a mm. month, um, it doesn't scare me at all. I no. know we can do it. Yeah, we're, we're comfortable. So our preferred style, I guess, to answer the question is a mixture of all the above. Right. Although our least favorite is some of the private RV parks because you are all on on top of each yeah. other. Yeah, I don't, I don't care where you're at. I don't care how nice the park is. If, uh, you know, like run away with the Clark said, if you can hear your neighbor closing the door, you're too you're close. You're too close. Um, all right, so now that we've talked about all the types and you've heard what our fair favorite RVers have been saying about it. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of each type of RVing or camping style. style. Okay, yeah. so let's start with boondocking. Um, pros would be you're out all by yourself. Which is always a plus. Yeah, so you're more in nature. You like get we some are peace right and now. 
We're in nature, but we're not boondocking. Yeah, if you saw around the corner, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> so more in nature, um, it's peace and quiet, and you get to go places that you would never be able to go in an RV park. Yeah, boondocking out in BLM or out in the desert kind of forces you to go out and hike and get out and see the nature Right, yeah. now, but there are cons to boondocking. Oh, and another big pro for boondocking is it's free. Yeah, I, I like that. All right, so cons of boondocking, of course, is you're on your own. So you have no, you're not plugged in, so no wa no electric, no water, nothing. Yeah, which can be scary to us in the beginning. We didn't know how to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think another con is, you know, sometimes you're out a little further from the city or civilization. So running into yeah. Wally World to grab groceries. Um, it's gonna, it might take you a while. Or yeah. like when we were in Quartzsite, we had to drive all the way to California to find <laughs> groceries. It wasn't that far. So, but. Um, so isolation too is another thing that can happen when you're boondocking for long periods. Um, you might get a little bit lonely out there. So yeah. that's something to consider. So let's talk about one of my very favorite places to stay and that's the Army Corps of Engineer Parks. Yes, you said it right. <laughs> I know, I usually say it backwards. 10 Anyways. months in and you finally said it. <laughs> I usually say Corps of Army Engineers, but anyway. So I really, really like these parks and the pros are they're normally lush and green. Um, they're usually right on the water. Um, you usually have more uh, space per site as opposed to a private park. And they normally look like this. Yes. Um, we've been literally tucked in to trees and just, I mean, vegetation that just made it feel like you were in your own little oasis. Yes. Although you could see your neighbor but you felt like you had your own private area. So yeah. that's that's a definite pro. And they're way cheaper than the private parks. Yeah. So, and if you have an access pass or a senior pass, um, you can also get 50% off the regular rates there. Which is outstanding. Right, and the cons for these parks, of course, is you usually do not have full hookups. You may have water and electric, but you hardly ever have sewer, and sometimes you have no hookups. Right, but they do offer dump stations and whatnot as yeah. you're leaving the park. So Most those, of the time they have bathhouses too, but yeah. they're usually really beautiful. All right, let's move to City State National Parks, which we also love. Yeah. And the benefits of these parks is they're normally more lush and green. Um, the sites are usually further apart than regular um, private parks. Um, and they're usually pretty beautiful. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong with a state or national park for sure. Yeah. And of course, there are always cons. So with these parks, you may or may not have full hookups. Um, you may have partial hookups or you may have None. no hookups. So yeah. you might be out in the middle of BFE, but um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And, and another big con to those is they have size restrictions on the type this of RV that you have. A lot so, of times. Yeah, so you'll, you'll have to really do your homework before you engage in one of those. Yeah. And yeah. also they book out early, especially if they're really gorgeous, really popular, um, and if they have full hookups, those will be gone quickly. So a lot of times you have to plan ahead to use those, especially some of the awesome um, national parks like Arches and um, you know the, the famous ones. So those are usually booked out a year or more in advance. All right, finally, the last is private parks. They're not all equal, that is for sure. So you do have to do your homework, especially on these. Um, you know, check Google Maps and do the satellite view read your reviews and find out because some of them are really awesome and um, you know they can be great priced and you have a good nice um, large site and other ones literally your RVs are going to be this close together you're going to have an unlevel yep. muddy site trying to pack um, them in for uh, more money yeah I guess that's it um, don't be surprised if your RVing style changes over time. A Just lot of like people, ours did. Yep, as they get into it, they find what they love and what they don't love, and they find kind of their niche. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Yep, absolutely. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell, and stick around for more bloopers. And we will see you on, on the, the road. road. So what we're wondering is... I don't want to answer a question. Because you are going to say... I know. All right, let's do it again. And you're blabbering. Blah, 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 blah. I can cut me out. That's true. You are a hell of an editor. <gasps> okay. You're a hell of an editor. I was kind of with jewelry. Blah, blah. Let me jewelry. Check that. <laughs> jewelry. I was kind of on the same mindset as Julie from Chickory's Travels. So, Have we stayed at a private park? Absolutely. We stayed at quite a few private parks. Really? Yeah. And I didn't know they were private. They're privately owned. Yeah, not private as in nobody can get in. Well, I thought it was a secret squirrel handshake to get into these. I didn't know what you were talking See about. See what I'm doing? I never heard of a private park. They're privately owned. That's okay. what it means by, okay, I hope we clarified okay. that in case you're wondering. Yeah, I learned something. I didn't know that there were private parks. Privately owned, that makes sense. I can wrap my head around that. I don't even know where to go with this. I don't either. <laughs>